Good morning, friendlies. I'm Carolyn, and welcome back to my RV life. I did a video a couple weeks ago, the first part of a series of FAQ videos that I'm going to be doing. And a couple weeks ago, the first debut FAQ video was uh, answering the most frequently asked questions I get hands down overall. And that was uh, questions about my seatbelt and about my hair. <laughs> Today I'm going to switch gears a little bit on the FAQs. And I'm going to uh, talk about everything you ever wanted to know about my RV. I'm going to go through the five most frequently asked questions I get about my RV. Okay, number one, I'm going to cover the mileage. Number one question is, what kind of gas mileage do I get? Number two, what size is it and is it easier to drive? Number three, I'm going to cover all, um, the size of all my holding tanks and how long I am able to boondock on what I have being fully self-contained. Number four, I'm going to cover just an overview of my power system, how I'm set up to run everything in my RV. And finally, number five, I'm going to talk all about my our operations. I'm going to answer questions like, can I drive with a refrigerator on? What runs on battery? What runs on propane? And I'm going to answer all those questions in number five. But before I get started on the FAQs, in my last video I mentioned I had a birthday this month. I asked that in lieu of any gifts or cards or anything that you make donations to my favorite charity, Child Haven in Fairfield, California, that helps abused, neglected, sexually abused, and assaulted children. And I know many of you have already made donations. I've gotten emails from you and I haven't gotten the tally yet from Child Haven. But again, I'm trying to raise at least $3,000. I think we have a long way to go, so uh, if you don't have a charity, that you're already committed to and if you don't mind um, donating a few bucks to an extra cause or if you don't to if you don't mind donating a few extra bucks to a great cause I'm gonna put the link again here and in the description of my video and I hope you will consider making a small donation to Child Haven all right let's get started on the answers to your most frequently asked questions about my RV First question number one what kind of mileage do I get on my new RV Phoenix uh, well, my gas tank is about a 55 gallon tank and I'm getting about uh, eight miles to the gallon. I was hoping to get closer to nine. I get a little bit over eight sometimes, but mostly um, even, even with the uh, smaller RV, I'm still only getting about eight miles to the gallon. I have, it is a V10, so it's a, the, the chassis is a Ford E450 V10 engine, and uh, I like it. It's got a lot more power, it runs really smooth, and it's a good engine. I really like the chassis on this, but yeah, I'm still only getting eight miles to the gallon. Overall though, except for my road trip to Alaska, I really don't drive as much as I used to. Uh, most of the time I drive, you know, maybe 100 miles and I sit for weeks. You know, I might move a few miles here and there, but overall, uh, I think I'm actually driving a little bit less or about the same as I drove in my old life. So, uh, so yeah, about eight miles to the gallon. And so that means it for about, three dollars let's say three dollars a gallon for gas which is about what i'm paying right now a little bit more uh times 55 that's 440 miles i can get on a tank of gas that can get me a lot of traveling especially the way i travel in the lower 48 i can go a month without filling up my gas tank because I mostly don't usually travel. So that's not bad. If you think about, if you're thinking about a budget and you're thinking about how much it's gonna cost to be on the road, uh, $150 to go 450 miles. And if you get on a BLM land where you just have to move not too far within 100 miles every couple weeks, that's really not a lot of money. It's a little, heck of a lot cheaper than rent or mortgage in most places. All right, uh, number two. What size is my new RV and do I notice a difference between uh, the smaller RV and Matilda, which was 29 feet? So my, um, this RV is 24 feet and from bumper to bumper it's 24.7, 24 feet 7 inches. And so that means I lost 5 feet off of the size of Matilda and basically it just cut off the bedroom. I had the separate bedroom in the back and um, I really, I don't notice the five feet in the living space at all as you know when i did the tour of this new rv and i'll put a link up 
here no i'll put a link up here to the tour of the of the rv the floor plan is so much better in this that i don't miss the space at all inside uh i don't miss the storage i might have just as much storage i got rid of a lot of stuff too probably but the living space is so much more comfortable and as far as driving yeah i'm able to get places that i would not be able that i would not have been able to get with uh matilda I still have a little bit of an overhang in the back, so, you know, I'm still limited as opposed to what you might be in a truck camper or a van. Uh, I was really hoping that I would have a lot more flexibility with the with the five feet smaller rig, uh, but and I don't necessarily, like, as far as going through dips and rough roads and things like that, uh, it's still not a four-wheel drive. <laughs> it's still not a truck. Uh, you know, it's, it's still a van chassis. And I think the wheelbase, what did I see, 53 inches? I probably shouldn't say that. I'll put it in the links. Uh, so, yeah, I still, um, I, I'm still limited because it is a Class C, uh, but I do have a lot more flexibility. I am able to find more camping. And, in fact, when I go to freecampsites.net now, and one of the best parts about freecampsites.net is you can read the reviews about what size rig goes there. And... Um, I see a lot not recommended for 25 feet or bigger. So that opens up a lot of different camping spots for me that I couldn't get into with a 29 foot. So yeah, I, uh, the 25 foot is, is definitely a plus. I think the smaller you can go, the better if you're going to be boondocking and even some, um, RV parks and campgrounds, uh, you know, they, especially, like I said, in another video, east of the Mississippi where everything is windy and very wooded, uh, smaller is better. Definitely. Number three, let's, um, Questions about my holding tanks and how long I can boondock on what I have fully self-contained. So my fresh water tank is 40 gallons. My black tank, which is my toilet, is 37 gallons. And my gray water, which is everything that goes down the drains, my shower, my kitchen sink, is 35 gallons. So typical RVs, you have about double the space in your holding tanks that you have in your fresh water tank, which makes sense, right? You're kind of going to be putting out double, I guess. So you have about double the capacity in your holding tanks that you have in your fresh water. Um, you know, you're kind of putting out probably more fluids in some cases than you're putting into the fresh water. Uh, that also means that maybe sometimes you can go a little longer dumping your tanks and filling up on water. And uh, But pretty much every time I fill up with water, I dump. I'm usually pretty close to needing to dump. And of course, typical style of all older RVs, none of my sensors work. <laughs> they pretty much always show half full and then they overnight they show full. So they don't really work all that well. Uh, I just, I, uh, just kind of have gotten to know my RV, my toilet. Now, um, I can actually see when it's starting to get really, really full and I need to dump it. So with the fresh water at 40, the black at 37 and the gray at 35, my propane tank is 14 gallons with all of those. I think the longest I have really boondocked without moving in my new RV is probably about 10 days. And that's only because I really have not been any place really, truly remote and pretty much after 10 days I'm ready ready to go somewhere and I'm usually not too far from a town so I'll usually go in I'll usually resupply and while I'm resupplying I'll fill up and I'll dump my tanks but 40 gallons of water can last me 10 days I know that for a fact I have gone 10 days on 40 gallons of water that's four gallons of water a day and that's not showering I do bathe regularly but I bathe with a little bit of water a little bit of soap and a washcloth that's how I bathe um, and a shower, uh, I think a shower, I think the best I can do is probably about 10 gallons. So usually what I do is if I'm going to go dump my tanks and fill up water the night before I will take a shower and use up the rest of my water. So, um, you know, yeah, being fully self-contained, being able to boondock 10 days at a time, I could probably stretch that to 40 day to, to two weeks to 14 days. Um, if I really wanted to and really, really rationing my water. Uh, my gray tanks and my black tanks could definitely go two weeks. Definitely, absolutely, they could go two weeks if I don't shower. Uh, but my water, I would probably have to ration a little bit if I were going to go the full two weeks, but not a problem. Propane, uh, even when I'm using my heat almost every day, which I have done in some cases here in Alaska in June and July, I think I've gone three weeks a month on 14 gallons of propane. 
And uh, so yeah, the propane lasts a long time. I don't think I've ever gone less than three weeks on a tank of propane. The pro propane running the heat, and I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but the propane does last a long time. So easy, 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 I can boondock 10 days with everything I have on board when I'm totally filled up. Stretching it uh, on fresh water, I can go 14 days. You take a few extra gallons, maybe five extra gallons of fresh water, you could probably go three weeks. Pretty cool. I had to get out of the rain. <laughs> I don't want my camera in the rain. All right, number four, my power. How do you power everything? And I'm kind of lumping a lot of questions together here, but how do I power everything inside my RV? Uh, well, I've got two 12 volt batteries, two 12 volt marine deep cycle batteries in this RV, which is really nice. I only had one in Matilda. So the two batteries really makes a huge difference. Uh, that just means that when they're fully charged, I can run longer without having to replenish them, recharge them, uh, without them getting depleted. I also, if you remember, have 260 watts of solar on my roof. And uh, I'm going to put a link to the solar. I did a video on super simple electrical and solar. Great, really helpful, broke it down in the simplest terms that I could understand. And I know that was really helpful to a lot of you from the feedback that I got. I'm gonna put a link to that video. It goes through my entire electrical system, my entire solar system, and really explains for beginners and, and, and and um, seasoned RVers who still kind of don't get the whole electrical thing like I didn't and maybe still don't in some cases it really helps uh, it's really gonna help be helpful so go ahead and check that out but overview uh, the two 12 volt batteries my 260 watts of solar I also have a hundred watt solar flexible panel with my plug-and-plays on the outside again look at the video for what that means and I have a generator which in uh, Alaska on the dreary days like today I do need and I run a lot I have the outboard I don't know if you can see me see it I have the energizer outboard generator because my onboard generator doesn't work and I haven't gotten a fix because the the outboard generator I think I might be sold on that why spend five hundred dollars to fix the onboard own on generator which are known to fail constantly and people constantly dump money into them when I can just pay five or six hundred dollars for an outboard generator that has lasted me what over a year maybe a year and a half, almost two no a year and a half I think now and it's great the only downside is I do have to lug it out and when it's raining I have to put up my awning or I have to put out the tarp to cover it up um, I it, you know I do kind of miss the convenience of just being able to start the generator inside but that's what powers my RV in many cases my solar is enough I never have to plug into shore power I never have to break out the generator when it's not dreary for days on end and right now I could probably even uh, put out my flexible solar panel but I, I broke one of the connections and I need to fix that and I might get enough to run my um, run my RV and I'm going to get to uh, the, number five is going to be how everything inside runs, what runs on what. Uh, but if you're not working like I am and running a laptop 12, 15 hours a day and it's a high powered laptop, my editing software, I can just see the battery go. Zzzz, it just sucks the life out of my my uh, my batteries. It just uses a lot of energy when I'm when I'm rendering videos and things like that. If you aren't working, if you don't have to run a TV, if you don't have to run uh, a laptop, or and you're just running basic lights and your basics inside here, you, what I have, 260 watts and 212 volts, will be plenty of power. It's when you have a big laptop, like I do, and I still even do fine with my laptop and my uh, Suoki lab, uh, battery. I have to use also the Suoki battery. I keep that charged, and it's basically just another power bank that I use, and again, um, that is in, I think the same video as, yeah, the same video as, um, my electrical. Okay. So that's my power. I think I covered everything. I don't think I can explain it any better than I explained it in the videos about my solar. I mean, I've done three or four videos now about electrical and solar, but I'd start with the video, uh, the RV electrical made simple. All right. Finally, the, the number five frequently asked questions is that I get 
are how the heck and the most intimidating thing when you especially when you're first starting out and I remember doing the walkthrough of the first RV I bought with the couple that I bought it from and it's so intimidating because you've got a lot of different systems working inside your RV that make it really um, confusing for a lot of people it was really confusing for me so I'm gonna make it extremely simple number one how does your refrigerator run? Most RV refrigerators are what they call three-way refrigerators. They And I don't know why they're three-way. Well, I think they're three-way. They run on propane or they run on battery, but you also need a little bit of battery for the clicker starter. So I think that might be the three-way. So here's how that works. When I'm boom knocking, I switch it to gas. Actually, I have it on auto all the time so that it automatically decides uh, what power source to use. If I'm not plugged in or if the generator is not on, it automatically reverts to gas. When I turn on the generator or and or plug into shore power, which is basically the same, I, I plug in my RV to the generator and it's basically the same as plugging into shore power, uh, it automatically switches over and the refrigerator runs on that. However, if you took the battery out of your RV or you turn the battery off, your refrigerator is not going to run because it needs a little bit of electricity to run the starter. So that's, but that's it. It basically runs, mine basically runs on propane all the time. And again, even with the refrigerator, the furnace, the water heater, the stove, the oven running regularly, not even really rationing, I can get three weeks out of 14 gallons of propane. So it lasts a long time. And um, the other question I get all the time is, do I drive with my refrigerator on? Yes, I do. Uh, I did a lot of research and reading and seeing what other people do when I first started because it is an open flame. And like, especially when you're getting gas, you probably should shut it off. But I don't think anybody does. And except maybe like super, super duper cautious people. Um, yeah. Technically, you're supposed to probably turn it off when you drive, and you're technically sp probably supposed to turn it off when you get gas. It really kind of makes me nervous when I think about it. It's an open flame in a gas station. Um, but I don't think anybody does. Uh, but I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Again, don't do as I say. Do as I, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Take my information of what I do and go out and do your own research and make your own decisions. That's what critical thinking adults do. And um, I'm just giving you the information on my experience, which is what my channel is about, right? My, my channel is about showing you how I do things. It's just one person's uh, view, one person's experience, one person's take. And that's one thing I learned in, in college is that you kind of take a little bit of everything and you kind of formulate your own opinions and ideas and experiences. And, and that's, that's kind of how we learn and grow and make decisions, right? I'm not here trying to be an expert on anything. I just want to make that clear. Um, I don't think there's, uh, on a lot of things, I don't think there is a completely 100% right or wrong way to do things. All I can do is share my experience as one woman's experience living on the road to kind of show you one way of doing it so that, again, you can decide for yourself how you want to handle these things, okay? Um, so the refrigerator... Uh, the furnace runs on propane, but the fan is electrical. So the furnace, the pilot, runs on propane, and it doesn't run without propane. So your furnace isn't going to run with no propane plugged into shore power, unlike the refrigerator. The refrigerator, you don't need propane. You can have no propane, you can plug in, and your refrigerator will run. But just like your gas furnace in your house, your furnace is not going to run if you don't have propane. At least mine doesn't. There might be some that run on electricity. As far as I know, mine doesn't. Mine is a propane furnace, and it only runs on propane, but the fan runs on electricity, which means I need enough juice in my batteries to power the fan. So when I'm boondocking, and it's cold, um, and it's rainy and I haven't had a lot of sun, that's something I need to consider before I go to bed. Do I have enough juice in my batteries to run the furnace? And I set my furnace at like 58 degrees. That means usually it just kicks on early in the morning so that when I wake up, it's not totally freezing inside. It's another thing. I do have tank heaters. Uh, I don't know if they work, but I, I've had to turn them on in nights where it gets down to 20. So that means that if it is going to be below freezing, I can turn on the tank heaters. They heat up my tanks so they don't freeze. And so far I've used them. As far as I know, I haven't had any problems with anything freezing. Uh, but the furnace. So electrical fan runs on propane. 
The stove in the oven, of course, runs on propane. The water heater runs on propane. The water pump, so uh, unless you are plugged into city water, which is a uh, city water hose directly into the RV, if you're just running off your holding tank, you have to have a water pump. That's how water goes from your holding tank through your faucets, and that runs on battery. So again, you know, you need to have, make sure you have enough juice, but what you do is you turn it on when you want to, when you want water. This is what I do. Some people leave it on all the time, I guess. I just turn it on when I want water. So I turn it on when I want to turn on my faucet, then I turn it off, especially now because it's got a little leak in it, which I haven't gotten around to fixing yet. Uh, and to make the, to reduce the leakage, I only pump enough water for what I need and then I turn it off so that there's no water sitting in there draining and that's been working for me pretty well uh, so the water pump runs on battery uh, and finally the last part of the uh, operations of the RV and I think that'll cover oh no there's one more lights so all your lights run on your battery period you you need enough juice in your battery to run your lights I have switched out all my bulbs to LED um, energy efficient bulbs and I'll put links to the those yeah, my Amazon store you can visit my Amazon store below and all everything that I use for my RV all my electrical my Suoki battery my LED light bulbs everything is in my Amazon store so I'll put a link in the description of the video um, and maybe I'll try to put it in the caption as well so that you can visit there and see the LED bulbs that I have bought and replaced so those reduce the amount of energy that drains your battery when you use your lights so your lights do run on your battery the microwave I never use my microwave uh, so it doesn't matter. I don't care. I use it for storage, for Capone's food. But the microwave will only run on a uh, generator. Yeah, actually, my generator will run my microwave. Um, once in a great while, I use the generator. I use the microwave. <laughs> what did I use it for? I actually bought tofu, gluten-free tofu burritos just to try them out. And so when I had my generator on last night, I threw those in um, just to see. I thought it might be nice to have something quick. And yeah, it was okay. Uh, but generally, I don't use the microwave a whole lot. Um, but it it does run on the generator. It runs on shore power. That's it. Uh, I, I With my 260 or even my 360 watts of solar, it's not enough to run the microwave. It's also not enough to run the air conditioner. So I can't use my air conditioner boondocking. I don't have enough power, even with the little generator, the little energizer generator I have. If my onboard generator worked, I would be able to run my air conditioner while I'm boondocking because that would give me enough power for the air conditioning because they take a lot of power. But I don't know, you'd need, I'm guessing, a thousand watts of solar. I don't know, those of you who know can uh, put it in the comments so that people who are interested in running air conditioning um, <laughs> the smoke is, in case you see the smoke, that is a mosquito coil. The best mosquito repellent I know of. Uh, so that I didn't get eaten alive. They eat me, so they are biting me here, but luckily I don't react. I don't get all itchy. But anyway, uh, for those of you who know, <coughs> for those of you who know how many watts of solar you would need to run an air conditioner, go ahead and put that in the comments. I hope you can hear me over this traffic. Go ahead and put it in the comments, and those of you who are interested in, in uh, running air conditioning while you're boondocking on solar, you can go ahead and read. Uh, but again, 360 watts of solar is not an, even close to enough. Well, 360 watts of solar and two 12-volt batteries. I think that would be also the thing. I think you would need more battery power, not just solar. My solar only charges what I have and two 12 volt batteries is not a ton of energy so I would probably need more battery power to store more energy to run an air conditioner okay I hope that makes sense again check out the video I'm gonna put it in the link check out that video about uh, electrical made easy uh, that explains everything I just wanted to do an overview today so um, I did I hope that answered uh, a lot of the questions I get asked all the time about my RV I answered what is my gas mileage uh, what size engine I have what the chassis of my RV is what size my RV is and is it easier to drive and is it easier to find boondocking I talked about my holding tank size and how long I can boondock. I talked about an overview. 
I talked about an overview of my power system and how everything runs, how my, how, um, my, yeah, how everything runs, and then finally the operations of the RV, how the refrigerator runs, how the air conditioner, the stove, everything runs. All right, so that's all the answers I have for you today from your frequently asked questions. Um, stay tuned. I think I'm going to try to do this at least once a week, once every couple weeks. I have a lot more topics coming up, including all your questions about Capone, all your questions about insurance, all your questions about the costs of living and safety, and all kinds of things. So I think maybe every, every Tuesday I'm going to try to do an FAQ and uh, so stay tuned for that and until next time be happy be free and be kind thanks for hanging out with me thank you for all you do to support my channel I really appreciate it I'll see you soon bye Mwah. all right so that's it for FAQs and I hope that really helped 